Hey guys, welcome to Learn Today IGCSC. This video is a tutorial on physics, paper 4, variant 4 1 for October November 2023 examinations. Question 1 A girl holds a rubber ball out of a window of a tall building. The mass of the ball is 0.2 kilograms. The ball is at rest 10 meters above a concrete path. Question A Calculate the gravitational potential energy of the ball relative to the concrete path. When you're asked to calculate any type of question, the most important thing that you should know is the formula. For this question, it's already mentioned here that you need to calculate the GPE. And the formula for GPE is mass times gravity times its height. All we have to do is plug in the values that is given in the question. The mass is 0.2 kilograms. Gravity is a fixed value of 9.8 and the height here is 10 meters. This will give you a value of 19.6 Joule. Remember to always leave your answers in two significant figures. Therefore, your final answer here is 20 and the units are Joule. Question B. The girl releases the ball and it falls towards the path. The ball strikes the path and bounces vertically upwards. So meaning that the ball fell down, when it hit the ground, it bounced upwards. The speed of the ball immediately before it strikes the path is 14 meters per second. So the initial velocity here is 14 meters per second. And the speed of the ball immediately after it strikes the path is 12 meters per second. So the value here is 12 meters per second. Part 1. Calculate the kinetic energy of the ball immediately after it strikes the concrete path. Okay, immediately after meaning that we need to find the kinetic energy over here. The formula for kinetic energy is 1 over 2 mv square. The mass given is 0.2 kilograms and there are two velocity given here, 14 and 12. Since we're looking to calculate the kinetic energy immediately after it strikes, this is the velocity that we are going to take. So the answer here is 14.4 and the units are joule. Remember your answer should always be in two significant figures. So the final answer is 14 joules. Question part 2. Show that the change of momentum of the ball when it bounces off the path is 5.2 kilograms per meter seconds. The formula for change of momentum is mv minus mu. And we are asked to show that the momentum is 5.2 kilograms meter per second. The ball before it strikes the path is 14 meters per second. And immediately after it strikes, the velocity is 12 meters per second. Momentum is a vector quantity, which means that it has both magnitude and direction. So when we do the calculation, we have to indicate its direction. If the initial direction was downward, we consider this to be the positive direction. And when it bounces off, the opposite direction would be negative. So in our calculation, we have to include the positive and negative value to indicate its direction. So the mass is 0.2 multiplied by its final velocity, which is negative 12. Take away 0.2 multiplied by its initial velocity, which is positive 14. And you will get a value of negative 5.2 kilograms meter per second. So the negative here is just an indication of direction. And it's okay if you don't see that in the question given. You still got the same value of 5.2, so this is your final answer. Always pay attention when it comes to question regarding change of momentum. The most common mistake done is that when there is a change of direction, students tend to forget to put a negative symbol. Part 3. The ball is in contact with the path for 0.25 seconds. Calculate the average resultant force on the ball when it is in contact with the path. The formula for resultant force is F equals to MA. Alright, let's substitute the values. The mass of the ball is the same which is 0.2. However, the acceleration is not given so we have to calculate it using our formula of V minus U over T. The final velocity was negative 12 minus its initial velocity which is 14 over the time which is 0.25. You will get an answer of negative 20.8 and the unit is newtons. Again, the negative symbol here is just an indication of its direction and it's not necessary for you to write them as your final answer. And please leave your answer as two significant figures. So the final answer is 21 newtons. Question 2. A copper cooking pan contains water. Figure 2.1. 
shows the pan on a hot plate of a cooker. This is a question from Chapter 2 Thermal Physics. Copper is a metal. Question A. Thermal energy is conducted through all solids by lattice vibrations. Describe one other way in which thermal energy is conducted through the copper. Thermal energy can be transferred by three methods. The first one is conduction, which happens only throughout solid. Second is convection, which happens through liquid and gas. And lastly is radiation. We are looking at conduction over here, which is transferred throughout solid. The atoms in a solid are in fixed position, which we call as lattice structure. In a lattice structure, there are free moving electrons. When heat is being supplied, the electrons will gain thermal energy from the hot plate. Now these electrons will move throughout the copper plate. Now these electrons will transfer energy from a high temperature region to a low temperature region. So this is how thermal energy is conducted throughout the whole solid by lattice vibration. And this is what you call as conduction. Now I have written my answers in points form but please do not write like this in exams. I'm only doing this so you see how you can gain a complete 3 marks. Question B. The outside surface of the cooking pan is kept clean by regular polishing. Explain one other advantage of keeping the surface of the pan shiny. Now in your course syllabus for 2023 to 2025 examinations, under the transfer of thermal energy for radiation, it has been already mentioned to you that you should know the effect of surface color and texture when it comes to emission, absorption and reflection of heat. And for a shiny surface, it is the best in reflecting heat and it is the worst in absorbing heat or even emitting heat. So the advantage of having the pen shiny here is that shiny surface is a poor emitter of heat. Therefore, any heat energy inside of the pan will not be lost from the pan to the surrounding. Question C. The thermal energy passes into the water through the base of the pan. Identify the main method by which thermal energy is transferred throughout the water. So as mentioned earlier, throughout liquid which is water, the mode of transfer is convection. Question 3. Liquids are difficult to compress, whereas gases can be compressed easily. Question A. Explain in terms of particles why it is difficult to compress liquids. To understand this, we have to first look at the particle structure of solids, liquid, and gases. In solid, the particles are arranged closely together, and there are no space in between them for them to be compressed. Whereas in liquid, even though there are some gaps, it is still difficult for them to be compressed. Whereas gases, they have a lot of space with each other, therefore you can compress them and force them to be closer to each other. So in terms of particle, you can say... Question B. Figure 3.1 shows a rectangular block floating in water. The density of water is 1000 kg per meter cube. So this is the block that is floating in water and the density of the water is 1000 kg per meter cube. The area of the base of the block is 0.014 meters square. So if we were to look at this in 3-dimensional, this is the area of the base. The base of the block is at a depth of 0.087 meters over here below the surface of the water. Part 1 show that the pressure due to the water at the base of the block is approximately 850 pascals. This question here is related to chapter 1.8 pressure. Now in this chapter pressure, you will learn two formulas. The first one is pressure in solid which is force over area and second is pressure in liquid and the formula is H times density times gravity. So since this is pressure due to water, it's liquid, we are going to use this formula. The height is already given which is 0.087. Since this is due to water, we have to take the density of water and the value of G is fixed at 9.8 and you will get a value of 852.6 pascal which is approximately 850 pascals. Part 2. Calculate the force on the base of the block caused by the pressure given in B part 1. So now you're looking to find F on the base. So this is the base of the block and the area given is 0 
and you're already given with pressure which you're going to use from the first part. So we can use this formula now. So the pressure is 850 pascals and the area given is 0 0.014. You will obtain a force of 11.9 and the unit is newtons. And your final answer in two significant figures would be 12 newtons. Part 3. Force F is equal to the weight of the block. Calculate the mass of the block. Mass is calculated in kilograms and weight is calculated in newtons. The relationship between weight and mass is that weight is equal to the mass of an object times the gravitational force. So to calculate the mass here, it will be weight over gravity. It's been given to us that the weight is 12 newton divided by the value of g which is 9.8, you will obtain a mass of 1.2 kilograms. Question 4. A radio transmitter is a very tall, thin cylinder. It is prevented from falling over by wires which have one end fixed to the transmitter over here and the other end fixed in the ground, here and here. The ends of the wires in the ground are a long distance from the transmitter. Question A. The center of gravity G is shown in figure 4.1. So here you have the center of gravity. Part 1. State what is meant by center of gravity. Center of gravity is the point or position where all the weight seems to act. Part 2. Explain why the radio transmitter without the wires is a very unstable structure. Now when discussing about stability, the position of the center of gravity of an object affects its stability. An object will not topple if its center of gravity is vertically above its base. And without the wire, if there was just a slight tilt, the center of gravity now is no longer vertically above the base. And this will now cause the object to topple down easily. So remember, the idea is that the center of gravity must be vertically above the base. Question B. Wire W is under tension. This is wire W and it exerts a force on the transmitter. Part 1. On figure 4.1, mark an arrow to show the force T exerted by wire W on the transmitter. So the force which is the tension of the wire will be here. Part 2. The force T produces a moment on the transmitter about its base. Describe how the moment produced by T is calculated and indicate on figure 4.1 what is meant by any other terms in the description. Moment is calculated by the force exerted times by its perpendicular distance from pivot. So now let's indicate that on figure 4.1. So the moment calculated by T here would be the force which acts downwards multiplied by the distance from pivot. Don't forget to indicate that on your diagram and have your formula. That's how you'll get a complete 3 marks. Next, question C. The radio transmitter uses radio waves to transmit radio and television programs. State one other use of radio waves. Under electromagnetic spectrum for radio waves, other than radio and television transmissions, you can also use it for astronomy and radio frequency identification. Question 5. Many methods of generating electrical power involve the use of water. Question A. Describe one method of generating electrical power from energy stored in water. Now, whenever you are asked to describe how to generate electricity from an energy source, make sure to include two key ideas. The first one is turbine and the second is generator. The idea is that you want to use the energy stored from your resource and have the generator to convert the kinetic energy produced by the turbine converted into electricity. So firstly, let's see how can we release the energy stored in water. So for water, what we can do is we can boil the water to make steam and this steam will have a very high pressure to then turn the turbine. This kinetic energy is what drives the generator. And as mentioned, it will convert kinetic energy into electricity. Question B. For the method you choose in A, state one advantage and one disadvantage of generating electricity this way. This is pretty simple. The advantage of using energy stored in water, no pollution is caused from this method. And also water is a renewable source of energy. And the disadvantage is that the cost of building this could be very expensive. 
Whenever you are asked about advantage, you can always talk about pollution and disadvantage, you can always discuss about its cost. And there's a very high chance that these answers are always acceptable. Moving on to question C, state two methods of generating electrical power for which the main source of energy is not the sun. This was an exact question that came out in your February-March 2023 paper 4-2. So you can see that questions are always repeating, therefore past year questions are extremely helpful. There are three methods for this. You can use any of these two out of three methods. 